This is the third video of the German for Beginners series. We've learned that there are three genders of nouns. And in the second video, we learned our personal pronouns. Ich, du, er, sie, es, wir, ihr, sie, and sie. And we need to know those pronouns so that we can access our handy dandy charts and learn how to put the correct form of the German verb in a sentence to match whatever subject that sentence has. Today we're going to conjugate German verbs for the present tense, that is the tense that is happening right now. For example, he plays baseball, she plays baseball, I play baseball. It's happening right now. It's the present tense. As a starting point, we'll memorize just some basic verb conjugations. These are the verb conjugations that we would use with a weak and regular verb. There is nothing tricky about these other than the fact that you have to actually memorize them. So here we go. For the ich form, you will take the stem and add an e. So for the verb spielen, it would be spiele. Sometimes when I'm teaching my students this, I say, for the ich form, drop the N, and then we're at the same place, spiele. For the du form, we take the stem and we add an ST, du spielst. For the er, Z, and S forms, we take the stem and add a T, er spielt. For the wir form, we just get to use the infinitive, so wir spielen. For the ihr form, we take the stem and we add a T. Er spielt. And for the Z and Z forms, we just get to use the infinitive again. Woo! -hoo! Sie spielen. Okay, now I'm going to give you some weak, regular German verbs, and you are going to conjugate them. So get ready. First verb, machen, which means to make or to do. So take a second, if you will, and see if you can follow the pattern that I just told you to conjugate machen. Go. Ich. Ich mache. Du. Du machst. Er. Er macht. Wir. Wir machen. Ihr. Ihr macht. Sie. Sie machen. <laughs> no problem. You totally got this. Now try this one. This is the verb denken, which means to think. Ready? Ich. Ich denke. Du. Du denkst. Er. Er denkt. Wir. Wir denken. Ihr. Ihr denkt. Sie. Sie denken. Last one. Let's try this verb, singen. Ich, ich singe. Du, du singst. Er, er singt. Wir, wir singen. Ihr, er singt. Sie, sie singen. So, there you have it. Very easy. That's your basic conjugation forms for weak verbs, for regular verbs. Nothing special about it. Just memorize the pattern. And just by using it, you'll just get used to it. And you'll start memorizing it without even trying. So if we have weak verbs, then naturally we have strong verbs. Strong verbs change the stem's spelling in the second and third person singular forms. The second person singular form is do, and the third person singular forms are er, z, and s. So the stem will actually change its spelling, but we'll still add the st and we'll still add the t most of the time. So let's take a look at some strong verbs. By the way, there's no way to know a verb is a strong verb, except when you first learn it, it's on a list somewhere. These are the strong verbs. And so you just have to learn it when you learn the verb. Oh, and when you look that verb up in the dictionary, it'll, if it's a strong verb, it'll give you the infinitive, and then it will give you the he form for the conjugation, so you can see how the stem uh, spelling changes. Okay, so let's try one. 
This is the verb fahren. Fahren means to go by vehicle. Here we go. For this one, if I were to look it up in the dictionary, it would say fahren, and then it would say fährt. You'll notice there are the two dots over the A. That's called an umlaut. And in English, that's the same thing as adding a silent E after the letter A. So if I couldn't type an umlaut for some reason, I would just put an E after the A. F-A-E-H-R-T. And that would mean the same thing. And Germans know that. So here we go. For the ich form, we have the stem plus an E. So, ich fahre. For the du form, though, we have to add the umlaut because it's a strong verb, so the stem changes its spelling. We add the umlaut to do that change. So it's du fährst. Notice the pronunciation change, too. It went from a ah to er. Ah. For the er, z, and s forms, we again add the umlaut. So we take that changed stem spelling plus the t, and we have er fährt. Now, in strong verbs, the plural forms are always conjugated regularly. There's never anything tricky in the plural forms, which is a total relief. So for the wir form, we use the infinitive, wir fahren. For the ihr form, we use the stem plus a t, so ihr fahrt. <laughs> My kids love that one. And then our plural forms, sie and sie fahren. That's no problem. It's the do and the a, z, and s forms where you have to pay attention in the strong verbs when it comes to conjugating. Let's take a look at a couple other ones. This is the verb schlafen. And in the dictionary, you would see schlafen, which means to sleep, and then you'd see schläft. Add the umlaut for the do and the a, z, s forms. So let's try conjugating schlafen. Are you ready? Don't just sit there, you gotta try. Ich. Ich schlafe. Du. Du schläfst. Er. Er schläft. Wir. Wir schlafen. Ihr. Ihr schlaft. Sie. Sie schlafen. This is the verb sehen. It means to see. And in the dictionary, it would show you sehen, sieht. Here we go. Ich, ich sehe, du, du siehst, er, er sieht, wir, wir sehen, ihr, ihr seht, sie, sie sehen. No problem. This is the verb geben. Geben means to give. It would say geben. And then in parentheses, it'd say gift. Here we go. Ich. Ich gebe. Du. Du gibst. Er. Er gibt. Wir. Wir geben. Ihr. Ihr gebt. Sie. Sie geben. So we've seen weak regular verbs, and we've seen strong verbs. And now I'm going to show you some weak verbs that are a little irregular. Anytime your stem ends with a D or a T, be careful because most likely you'll have to keep that E after it in order to springboard into the final sound. It's really too difficult to pronounce too many consonants in a row. So the Germans have left themselves this little buffer to kind of whoop, jump into this next part. So let's start with one of those. This is the verb arbeiten. Arbeiten means to work. So for this one, our stem is arbeit. So when I get to the do form and the er, z, s form, I'm gonna keep that e after the final t in the stem so that I can springboard into the ending. Watch what I mean. For the ich form, I will have the stem plus e like normal. So ich arbeite. For the do form, I'll have the stem plus the E, plus the ST. So now I have du arbeitest. For the er, z, and s form, I'll have the stem, plus the E, and plus the T. So, er arbeitet. For the plural forms, wir arbeiten, ihr arbeitet. So that's one where I had the stem, plus the E, plus the extra T. So, ihr arbeitet, and then sie arbeitet. 
Let's try another one. You try this one. This is the verb finden, which means to find. See if you can conjugate this weak verb that is irregular because it ends in that D. Ich, ich finde. Du, du findest. Er, er findet. Wir, wir finden. Ihr, ihr findet. Sie, sie finden. No now here's a common sense exception. When you take your stem and it ends with an S or an S sound and you're getting ready to use it for the do form, you don't have to add an extra S into that sound. It's already there. So here's one that's obvious. Um, this is the verb essen. Now essen is a strong verb, so we will change the spelling of the stem. In the dictionary it would say essen, and then in parentheses it would say ist, I-S-S-T. So that would be the he, she, it form. So here we go. We're going to say ich, ich esse. Now du, this is the part I'm talking about. I already have the I-S-S -S going on. Do you think that it makes sense to add another ST onto the ISS change? I mean, enough is enough, right? So, we have do ist. It looks just like the he, she, and it form because it would be silly to add an extra S in there. Er, er ist. Wir, wir essen. Ihr, ihr est. Sie, sie essen. Now, sometimes we have the S sound, but it's not an S. Here's the weak verb tanzen. Tanzen, of course, means to dance. You can see it's a good cognate. So here we go. Ich, ich tanze. Du, du tanzt. Er, er tanzt. Wir, wir tanzen. Ihr, ihr tanzt. Sie, sie tanzen. Did you see how in the do form I just shoved the T on there? I didn't even bother adding an extra S because there was already an S sound there. Okay, now there are some verbs that are special. These are called modal verbs and they are super high frequency verbs that we use kind of like a helping verb. They're kind of strong, but yet they're weak. It's kind of crazy. They're modal verbs. Things like can and must and uh, may and want and would like, these are our modal verbs. So here we go. This is the modal verb können. It means can or be able to. Ich kann, du kannst, er kann. The plural forms are always the same though, even as modal verbs. Wir können, ihr könnt, and sie können. This is the verb wissen, and it means to know a fact. So, here we go. Check out these conjugations. Wissen. Ich weiß, du weißt, er weiß. Wir wissen, ihr wisst, sie wissen. Ah, but you use it so much that you don't end up thinking about it because it's no big deal. Okay, last thing. The verb to be and the verb to have. These are the two most important verbs in English, and I think they're the two most important verbs in German as well. In English, to be is a strong verb, and in German it is too. But let's take a look at the verb to be in, in English first. I am, you are, he is, we are, they are. I don't know about you, but when I look at am, is, are, it doesn't look anything like be to me at all. It's the same in German, watch this. The verb to be in German is sein. Ich, ich bin. Du, du bist. Er, er ist. Wir, wir sind. Ihr, ihr seid. Sie, sie sind. That is not good. That doesn't even give us the happy plural forms. All of it's a mess, just a disaster. But that's the most important verb, because if you aren't, if you don't exist, then what are we even talking about? 
the verb to be is way important. So, let's do it one more time. Ich bin, du bist, er ist, ihr sind, ihr seid, sie sind. The other verb, this verb, haben, is a weak verb, but it's irregular in the do and er, sie, es forms. Here's what I mean. The stem is H-A-B, hab, but watch what we do to the B. We say, see ya, buddy. Okay, ich habe, du hast, er hat, wir haben, ihr habt, sie haben. That's basic verb conjugation patterns. You gotta memorize them. Auf Wiedersehen. Mach's gut.